Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. Welcome this week's episode of the podcast. Hope y'all having a great week, and I appreciate y'all being here, man. I really do, because we have an amazing episode today with a great guest. Before I introduce this guest, I just got to say, we just announced Blue Collar Bass, dude. My first headline tour and full-length album, and holy shit, I am so excited to finally share this with y'all. You know, I've been working on this album for a long time. Um, got to work with some of my favorite artists on the planet, and it's my first full length. Well, technically second because I did the comedy record, but it's my first serious full length, man. It's definitely the most mature, well put together piece of work I've ever done. Got to work with some of my favorite artists on the planet, and I'm so proud of how it came out sounding, and I cannot wait to finally get it out there to y'all. And uh, the tickets go on sale for the tour tomorrow. Uh, if you sign up for the pre-sale, they go on sale today. And I recommend signing up for the pre-sale because you get chances to win. Merch prizes, you know, all the merch that we're bringing on the tour, tickets, meet and greets, and the grand prize winner is going to be sitting in the seat across from me and get to be a guest on this podcast. So make sure to go get your tickets for the tour, dude. Um, it would mean a lot to me, and I'm very, very excited to bring this on the road. I'm going to make sure to make this the most fun experience it can be, man. All I'm trying to do for Blue Collar Base is just make it the most fun event you could go to. So I promise you'll have a good time. Go get your tickets, and it means the world. Also, before I introduce this guest, I just got to say the first single of the album comes out this coming up Tuesday with Grizz called Bass Music. I don't even know if we're announcing it until tomorrow, but I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all now and promote it right now. Yes, Bass Music is finally coming out, and Grizz is coming on the show um, tomorrow, so he's going to be the guest for next week's episode. Very excited for that. He's literally my favorite artist in the planet, man. I can't believe I got to work with him on this song, and it's such a great song. I love how it came out. It's such a fun one, and I, I hope y'all go check it out when it drops. But my guest this week is an absolute savage in the studio. One of the best producers out there. I put him up there at the top with like a Mr. Bill and uh, who who else do I put him up there with, dude? I had I had people that I I had people that I kind of categorized him with, but I blanked on that. But dude, this guy is an absolute beast in the studio. He is has a really awesome YouTube channel with a lot of really dope production tips and tutorials. So if you're a producer, I definitely recommend going and checking out his YouTube. He's all about the community and growing the community. And I'm so happy and blessed and lucky to have him be a part of the Blue Collar Bass Tour, dude. I love this conversation. It gets pretty weird, but he's a weird guy, and so am I, dude. We can talk about a lot of shit on this show that we've never talked about, dude. He's a very deep and spiritual feller. And I loved that. And I dove into that conversation with him. I had so much fun with this conversation. We got in there deep. We got weird. It's fucking fun, dude. I hope y'all enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ahi. Hell good. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to open this up. I know you don't drink. Well, I drink. Celebratory. Celebratory. Yeah, we're doing it. We're yo. doing it, dude. We just released the, the tour flyer today. I love that we're doing this podcast on the day that we announced the I know. Tour. The, the timing of it just worked out so well. It's magic. It's perfect, man. How how were you feeling up to this point, dude? Where is it? How, what type of emotions were you going through? Um, Scared and excited. Like, you know, it's like oscillating to be like oh my god we got so many fucking shows coming up can i curse yeah oh i don't give a fuck okay, okay. son cool, cool you've cool. watched the show bro yeah you know. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know always in the moment but um yeah there's that and like being like oh my god so many shows but also like oh yeah so many shows yeah you know yeah like i'm i'm really stoked on that and um just like it's like uh, i felt like this like everything i've always wanted you know like finally coming together so like Hell yeah! Thank you, dude. No, thank you, brother. Yeah, this is gonna be fucking awesome, man. Yeah. Is this is this your first uh, like tour having this many like dates in a row? Yeah. Hell yeah! Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've yeah. I've done tours before, um, like with Loose and Dossier. I was mentioning like uh, the circus acts that I used to make music for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it was sort of like for the people that don't know, uh, Loose and Dossier was like. Uh, circus act like Cirque du Soleil but with like Burning Man type sort of style to it 
but with like world influence bass music. So like, you know, like kind of like Shanti bass. Have you heard Shanti bass? I don't know, but it sounds like, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's got like world inspired, you know, musician elements in it. And, uh, you know, we did a bus tour and, um, you know, we did it up and down the, the West Coast and went up and had our finale at Shambhala. Hell and yeah. uh yeah we were there 2015 and 2017 so that was like my first big bus tour and you know we did like coachella and like headlined the um sahara stage you know huge things and that was like my first like i just got thrown into it and i was like making music for them um because basically like they needed somebody to make a whole new tour's worth of music in like a month. And then no, there's nobody else better for it than you, dog. <laughs> and they were like, oh, I had actually um, uh, tried out for them like some like six months earlier at that moment in like 2014 or something like that. And uh, yeah, they were just like, oh yeah, that guy, he makes music really fast. We should contact him. Mm -hmm. And they're like, can you make us a whole show in a month? And I was like, uh, Okay, <laughs> you know. So you produced all the music. Uh, it was me and this other fellow Atla. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then later on we had uh, this other fellow Sean Barry, and that was like the three musicians that made music for Loose and Dossier for the years that I was with them. It was so, like three or three and a half years, or something. So like if that. you're producing for them, like what were you doing on tour? Were you DJing? Were you doing Ahi yeah, sets? Yeah, I was. I was doing i was sometimes opening up as ahi. I like I'd open up the show as ahi, mm -hmm. and then I'd perform with them. But I always like. Because it's like a circus thing, I always have to dress up. Yeah. And so, like, I would be like a, a plant shaman. Mm. And so, like, I would have this giant potted plant on top of my head for, like, main stage lightning in a bottle. <laughs> and, like, I would wear a suit with six arms. And, like, one arm would, like, have a string and it would connect to the other arms. And it would be, like, this thing. And I'd be up on stage, you know, doing the Ableton thing, you know, transitioning in between the songs. And the thing is with the circus act – they have like aerials and like performances up in the air, like Hell on yeah. the, like spinning around or fire or they're up in a cage or something like that. And so the transitions can never be like the same every single time just because reality in life is just so variable and different and they perform it differently each time. And so like I would have to, I would have like in between music almost like for, for each, uh, for each act in the, in the show. Your outfit couldn't sound more fucking heady, dude. You know what I mean? But it fits you so well. Uh, there was another one where I would dress up as like a dinosaur shaman. It was always like some sort of shaman. You're a shaman yeah, every time, dude. Yeah, I was kind of a shaman because of some sort. You know, like I wore, it was almost like a Barney. Like, it, or who's the uh, who's the girl in Barney? Fuck, bro. I don't Do you know, know, man. I can look that up. Real yeah, quick. thank you, Kyle. Yeah, oh, wait, oh, let's go and say we got Kyle back there today, dude. Thank you. He's got the UFO shirt on. Yeah. yeah Kyle, show him on the camera, sure. man. All right, let me pull this out. Yeah, yeah pull, always pull it out. We had the alien himself coming in, so I had to put on my alien shirt. Doing butt stuff. Oh, let me move this. There we go. <laughs> I love it. Lo love you, Kyle. Lo always happy to have you here, man. Oh, thanks, you're, man. You're, I'm I, glad to be here. You're such a positive, light, amazing energy, and I just love being around you, man, and I appreciate you being here today with us. Oh, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, 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 so there's this, I don't know, I, I think it's on Barney, there's like a female version that's like some sort of dinosaur, and it sort of looked like that, where it's got like some horns and whatnot, and mm -hmm. it's like all colorful and sort of sparkly, but then like I'd be wearing like an Egyptian tunic along with it, you know, and so... Yeah, it just every time I was just like dressed up to the, to the gills, you know, maybe as a fish, who knows? You know? So the female dinosaur <laughs> it, on Barney is a stegosaurus and her name is Baby Bop. Yeah, Baby Bop. So it sort of looked like that. So Hell I was like yeah. Baby Bop Shaman. Yep. <laughs> That's fun, dude. That's fun. Dude, I met a shaman out here. Uh, he's like a mushroom shaman. Oh, watch out. Yeah, so I call his name Steve. So I call Steve. I call him Steve the shaman. Yeah, no, I call him synagogue Steve. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So did, did you go on a trip with him? No, nah, man, no. I ain't done a trip with him. I feel like this guy would really take me on a trip, dude. Yeah. When I mess with psychedelics, I do enough just to get in the door. I'm not trying to go deep into that. Have door. you have you have you gone deep on a psychedelic before? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It seems like, you know, I think a lot of people on our scene have like had at least one I think it's important, you know, as a human being, yeah. you know, I think it's like sort of like it's a thing to experience. Yeah. Well, I've had life changing experiences like, on psychedelics. Uh, which one? 
A couple. So I know I know on acid, dude, I had the epiphany that I was gonna do music full time. Yeah. Like I was always doing music, always the music guy, but I was always like never thought you could actually have a real career out of it or whatever. Mm. And I always, you know, had I was gonna be I am gonna do this, but I'm also gonna do music. Mm. I remember one night I was just tripping. I was at a event with my buddy. It was like a silent disco. And uh I was listening to Vibe Street. I don't know if you know that is. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um I was just crying. Mm. And he was like, you all right, dude? I'm like, I've never been better. <laughs> it was like, it was just, I had an epiphany. I was just like, no, this is it. Like, uh, uh, this is what I was meant to do. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a life-changing experience. It's like, you know, y you discover who you are and what me what truly, you know, is important to you. It's yeah. Those kinds of things. Yeah, know? it was such a, it was such a powerful moment. And I, I feel like eventually I would have got to that moment, but it just all, I feel like the psychedelics just really made me, because you look inward, you know what I mean? You look mm. inward and outward and you think, you think a lot more about happiness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I love that about like psychedelics. Sometimes all you just feel is love. You're just like overcome with love. And I'm yeah. like, what about love? Mm -hmm. Music. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's one of the most important things about the psychedelic experience is it almost like, you know, uh, well, I feel like it does two things. It like, makes you aware of everything and then out of everything it, it allows you to focus in on the things that are important really important yeah, yeah. what about you you had uh, any life-changing experiences on psychedelics uh, a couple yeah <laughs> you want to share any day? oh absolutely yeah, yeah. I just, uh, for me mine. it's funny it's like i've I sort of look like someone that would like go off the deep end on psychedelics. You don't say. Dude. Yeah, right. Like, oh, look, I got my little danglies. And you shit. and Kyle look like y'all should be best friends, dude. <laughs> you know, it's like I've had like a fair share of psychedelic experiences, but like not like a ton in terms of like quantity. It's just I happened. Each one happened to be extremely profound. I happened to do it. It's sort of in the right place at the right time to like spark that like thing that's just like beyond like normal reality mm -hmm. um like i would say like i've had really amazing ones where that i think sort of set the tone for like what i believe in life you know like uh i, I guess like uh, in uh, i don't know how familiar you are with hinduism but there's this idea of like you know hinduism is sort of told as like this like polytheistic religion uh, where All there's right, multiple explain. gods, okay, you know, okay, like, okay. Uh, you know, it's versus monotheism. But like when I looked into Hinduism, there's actually like this idea of monotheism within it that's called the Brahman, which is the Godhead, which is the point in which all other parts of reality emanate from. See, like the main God, is there a main God? And in, in, in it's, it's less of a main God and it's more of like a center point in which all things emanate from. And gotcha. so all the lesser gods or the other gods like are all aspects of this one point. It's like the main Titan. And then after that you had, uh, what was it? The, uh, you had the Titans and you had like the demigods. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, the originator of all the other things, yeah. you know? Okay. And so like, I had like an experience in which like I was no longer Chris Adams, but I, like my personality and identity, you know, left my body and it became that center thing, you know? And I feel like that's ultimately like the one of the best things from the psychedelic experience that I think any one person can gain is because they're like, oh, because like I've been at this point that all things have come from, you know, I can sort of relate and understand a lot more about the world than just from my individual perspective. You know, I have like compassion, you know, for all everything else, you yeah. know? And, um, and so I'd say like, those were like the really good ones where like, you know, I could like, no longer be me and i could be everything you yeah know? like that's where you know, like all is one is like a yeah it's like that, it's like from the christian bible you know like love love thy neighbor yeah you know what I yeah mean? Like, because yeah. of the golden rule you like treat your neighbor as yourself yeah you know and and in the psychedelic experience it it almost becomes like oh my god like <laughs> it, it becomes like oh you should treat other people like yourself because at some point in some form, they all, you, they all are part of yourself if you view it from the perspective of that center point. Yeah. You know, and so that's been like, I guess, one of the most important philosophical, spiritual realizations that has affected basically every aspect of my life. And then, and then I've had the dark psychedelic experiences. Yeah, I had a dark one that could really kind of 
got me off the rails for a bit and turned me off of psychedelics for a couple of years. Yeah, you know, when they hit back, you know, you're like, oh, okay, this isn't just something you can do every day. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was it was just a weird experience, man. Like it was it was very scary and uh, mm-hmm. it fucked me up. And mm-hmm. I was just like, you know. Was it a bad scenario or? No, I was in the best scenario I could have been in, but yeah. something just happened that had never happened before. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely eye opening. Like, I'm glad it happened because it was like ego death mm. to like the most extreme degree. Mm. You know what I mean? It was not comfortable, not, no. not good vibes. No, not at all. Yeah. Like, and, uh, but like I said, at the same time, I'm glad it happened because mm. it made you respect. Yeah. Made you respect the psychedelic a little bit more, yeah, and also know your place. Because, like I said, I took a couple years off of it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now, now I'm at a place where I'm comfortable. Where, like I said, like I'll eat like a l- little bit of mushrooms mm-hmm. and just kind of just get in the door just to feel giggly. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to go. <laughs> Those deep. are almost sort of the best. Those are know? the best. Yeah, yeah, I have way more fun like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. a little older now. I don't think yeah. I'm gonna just dive straight in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do five bits of acid and boof some DMT. Oh you know, my what God. <laughs> you just like launch out right there. Yeah, dude. Yeah. God, I wonder if anyone's like done a butt hit of DMT. Like, oh, a, for sure. Yeah. Oh, everyone's done. They're, Someone's done everything yeah. in that world, you know? That they're like, what's the most extreme thing I can do? <laughs> in the butt. In DMT. The- <laughs> Here, I need your help. <laughs> Dude, I <would> Aliens, lo- <laughs> help me out. <laughs> I would love to see someone take a ass rip of some fucking deepsters. you pay to see that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not pay. All right, all right, all right, all right. I might pay a small fee. You know, not like, I'm not paying no $45 ticket. Like, or like $5? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, you know, like maybe a free it's show. Got a price on it. Someone out there is like, oh, finally, I got a business idea. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Watch me poop some DMT. That'd be crazy, dude. You just start tripping out your ass, dude. Oh, I'm sure. Tr- there's some story where people take stuff and, like, you know, their trip starts in their ass. And, you know. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. You know. Whoa. I mean, when the bass so low, you just feel it in your ass. That's sometimes where I, f- I start feeling it first is, like, whenever you go to hear a nice sound system, you just feel it in your asshole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's that. It's like, you know, somewhere around the brown notes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, my dark experience with it was um, I traveled to the jungles of Colombia. Like in your trip or like legit? You no, were like I flew down there okay. and paid money. <laughs> you start having a bad trip. You're like, fuck, I'm in Colombia. Yeah, <laughs> bro, it was intense because like I went down there to do ayahuasca with like. Uh, oh, damn, so you've gone in there. Oh, yeah. You know, which I do not recommend anyone out there. You don't recommend ayahuasca? No, I don't recommend going to Colombia to do it with people that are there to take your money. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. you got to find a nice place for it. Yeah, like I, because like down there, there's shaman wars. Oh, just like shamans, like it's like gangs, you know, and like yeah. you're my territory. Yeah, no, there's like people, like, you know, because they're fighting over, you know, money. You mm-hmm. know, they're like, oh, and, you know, and the other people are like, oh, I want to be the best shaman, you know, and like there's like wars in which like people like psych- psychically attack each other, physically attack each other, you know, and um, that wasn't the case where I was, but it was just like the, the shamans that I was with, it felt like they were doing it to show off their own, you know, ego. Mm. They're like, look at how good of a shaman I am. I can summon these things. And then I was just like, yeah, but what you're creating is not good. Right. And whenever you're on psychedelics, you probably see through that shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Um, And so it's like, you want to hear this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This this is great. So um, basically, yeah, I'm doing the ayahuasca, you know, I, do, I do my herpy derpies. I vomit, you know, that's, that's why I call herpy it to derpies. like, you know, make it a little less serious. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I come back to the circle and let me ask you this, dude, did you vomit at your ass? I heard some people do that whenever they do some ayahuasca. I, I didn't, okay, but nice. I could, I could see someone doing that cool, for sure. Cool. You know, it's like it, it wiggles loose your whole system. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, basically I'm sitting that back down and this portal opens up. And this deluge of entities comes pouring out of this portal. And they have, like, sharp blue and orange fangs. And uh, the color contrast between them is so intense, it's, like, nauseous just to view it. And um, they have, like, Mickey Mouse-like ears, but with black and white concentric circles. Damn, bro, you probably don't like Disney no more. (laughs) Oh, We're here for your soul. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like. And that, that, cause like, 
that was exactly the experience was that I felt like they were there to capture my soul. Oh, no, capture the flag with your fucking entities, bro. Yeah, oh, dude. Man. Oh, yeah, 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 it was that. And uh, they were like, surrender, surrender, ah, cha, cha, cha. And oh. every, every time I, I, they spoke, it sounded like electricity running down a telephone wire. And it was like echoey and whatnot. And, um, yeah, basically they were trying to form a living LED wall in front of me like with their black and white ears and they'd strobe their ears like little LED points to like create a new reality around me to like convince me of whatever it was that would eventually lead to me giving my soul energy to them. You didn't trust them with your soul that for a second. No, because like I described earlier, I'd had the moment, like the good psychedelic experiences yeah. that like I started to know like what I'm sort of aiming for. Yeah. And this was like way off the target. You know, this was like a whole nother like, Thing. I was like, okay, what y'all are doing right now is like, has nothing to do with benefit or making me a better person. Mm. Maybe in the sense that like challenge can make you a better person, you know? And so I try to take that away from this, but basically, yeah, they, um, they're like, surrender, surrender. Ah, cha, cha, cha. And I was like, okay, how about instead, you know, I'm not really feeling the love. How about we play a game instead? You know? Cause like, one of the biggest things in like a really serious scenario like that is to like make it a little goofy. Yes, yeah, so like you know? take your clothes off or something. Yeah, you know, and like in that moment, like they don't, they didn't know how to respond to that. They're like, it's not working. It's not working. Erase this memory. Erase this memory. Oh my God. Yeah. And I start feeling this chewing sensation in my brain and then like a snap and then they'd start to pixelate. And um, I, uh, from there, I was like, okay, you know, I've had these other experiences, so I know that we're all connected. So I summoned up my shaman self or whatever, and it's like, anything you can do, I can do as well. And so I opened up their portal and, like, looped it back over them. I don't know how. It's just that's what happened in the moment, and I held on to that memory of them. You know, they, like, were cutting – they cut, like, multiple strings, and I held on to one because I was like, this is too important to forget, like – this kind of like dark shit, you know? Yeah. Like I, I can't have this be a, a hidden part on me. You know, I need to shine the light on it. And, uh, and then, yeah, then they were gone and I was, got up from the circle. And I was like, I'm out of here. I'm going to go sit on the beach and play a little tiny instrument, yeah. you know? And then I was chill. You how know? long, how long did it last for? Oh, who knows? You know, I'm in the middle of Columbia in the jungles, you know, with no phone, yeah. you know, like no sense of time. How long did it feel? A bunch like, of strangers. Yeah, yeah. You know? How long did it feel for you? Like, if you, like looking back on it, uh, like that whole experience. Yeah. Hmm. Hard to say. Really hard to say. Maybe a few moments. Maybe a few minutes. Damn. You know, and then, and then people, you know, like the shamans were like, "You need to come back for healing." But they'd say healing as if, like, they wanted something from me. Mm. You so know? you didn't trust these people. Yeah, and so I, I ended up booking it out of there. Like the ne or actually, I took uh, – I don't know why. I was a little dumb. But this was, like, 2011. And um, I took some uh, – what's it called? Uh, mescaline. Yeah. The next day with them. And, like, their vibe totally changed. It was all great. Yeah, you know, it's just, that was chill. Yeah, it was like totally awesome. And then I left early, and I went to go see a friend of mine in Bogota, and then I flew back home. But, um, but yeah, it was like probably one of the more profound, dark moments of my life was like going down there and like sort of realizing like you know not everything about the psychedelic experience is like a positive one, you know, and it's you you gotta have a sense of self in some cases, and then let go of yourself in other cases well yeah what'd you take from that experience like what the like with all the fucking mickey mouses trying to steal you, you yeah know? i yeah. mean that's basically what they mean yeah, like i've never ideas. felt pain in a soul in mm. my soul before damn do you think you got some you got some demons in you some 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 i think i could pain? have allowed them because i think what their goal was to basically get people to do ayahuasca every week because i don't think that they could inhabit i have no idea about any of this but like just the sense of like, you know, my impression of like, you know, when you see something, you get an impression of something. My impression was is that they can't actually inhabit the physical form and so that they have to use other people to do things in the world. Mm. And so like it felt like they were just trying to get people to submit to them and keep doing ayahuasca to influence their 
thoughts. Whenever you go and experience something like that, does it make you believe in like a god and a devil? Like, do you believe like that might have been like some some demons or like does it? Oh, like, if anything was a demon, if I've ever expe- experienced in my life, like that would be something like that. I'm not sure if I believe in like the biblical gods and demons yeah, and devils. Yeah, maybe not biblical, but like maybe like a god or maybe there's just some d- devils or yeah. Well, I mean, in my experience, like I mentioned earlier, like the singularity point. You know, like I feel like if anything, if that's the God point. Cause if it's a thing in which all things emanate from like, you know, and so like, yeah, I, I feel like that's like a positive thing. Like when I feel like connected to that, when I feel connected to everything and it, it's a positive thing. Cause like I can uh, enlarge my compassion. Yeah. I get that. And, uh, and then when I experience other things like that, it's like, I recognize like, okay, I can have uh compassion for that, but I don't have to, deal with it and accept it mm. and invite it into my being. And that, you know, that carries over into real life, you know, where it's like there are people that make you feel good and you want to do more for them. You know, you want to include more of them in your life. And then there's people that, that, you know, try to take advantage of you, you know, and it's good to be able to pinpoint who those people are and not necessarily hate them, but just like maneuver. So that way, they just don't influence you. Oh, you, you. slide. That's yeah. what I call it. I'm a yeah. slide. Yeah, yeah. You know what you I mean? Know? And so it's like, you know, I'm not going to hate on you, but I'm going to slide. Yeah, I'm a slide. <laughs> yeah, dude, I've met the devil twice. Yeah? Yeah. I met him once. I was in I was in my mom. I was living with my mom, and I was sleeping one night, and I had like a lucid dream. It was like one of the most vivid, like real dreams. I don't know if it's a lucid. What actually, what actually is the description of a lucid dream? I've had lucid on the podcast, and we talked about this. Kyle, can you look that up for me? I'm already on it. Thank you, but I had a, uh, I had like this dream. He's a good one. Yeah, he's great, man. But I had a, I had a dream, and it was uh, so like real. Mm. And I met him, and he was a good looking guy, oh. suit and tie. Yeah, like looked like a nice devil wears Prada. Yeah, exactly, bro. It looked like a good guy. And uh, I sold my soul to him for rock and roll, basically. Oh yeah, yeah. Still do are. Huh? Still are? I don't know. I mean, I feel like I have a soul. Yeah. Um, but I had in in that experience, I sold my soul to him, and then um, whenever I had that bad trip, I was telling you about, mm-hmm. he was there again. Oh, same guy, same guy. Yeah. Months later, like the same features, like same suit. Like that's what fucked me up. I was like, yo, he was there again. Like, uh, how have I met the devil twice? Like, you know, maybe like a year apart. Mm-hmm. Same feller. So a lucid dream is when you know that you are dreaming while you're asleep. You're aware of the events flashing through your brain aren't really happening, but the dream feels vivid and real. Some people may even be able to control how the actions unfold. Got you. I didn't know I was having a dream. Yeah. It felt real. Yeah. It felt really real. I've had those. Yeah. Uh, I find that when I go back to like my parents' house and I, I sleep in like my childhood bed for the first time, I that's when I have those kind of dreams. Mm. I don't know why. I have no idea why, but it's like, I'll go back home for some time and I'm like, Oh great. Here I go again, sleeping. And then I'll be like, Oh my God, my dreams are so intense tonight. Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you know, I've, I, I, you've heard of sleep paralysis. Yeah. I've had that five times. Yeah. I've had that maybe around the same amount of time. Handful. I like it. You do? Yeah. I like it. It's fun. Like, yeah. I know what's happening. It's fucking cool as hell. Yeah, is that like a little, like, you feel like there's, like, something sitting on you? Oh, dude, like, these motherfuckers above my bed talking shit. I'm like, if I could move my hands, y'all wouldn't be talking that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you lucky. You lucky my body's yeah. asleep. I'd fuck y'all up. Oh, you know what man. I mean? Like, yeah. that's something that, like, you know, in, like, ghost movies and shit, they're, like, running from the ghost. I'm like, have you tried to shoot the ghost? Or, like, there's demons in the house. Shoot it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot that motherfucker. I like that. Yeah, yeah. dude. I, I, I'm, uh, I think at the moments in which I had it, I was a little bit more timid personality, you know? So I could, I, I had some moments where I let it overwhelm me. But I like the idea of, like, facing the fear. Yeah, I ain't scared you know? of shit, bitch. Like, them motherfuckers above me, like, I know, and even the first time I had it, mm-hmm. I knew, because I had heard about it. I was like, oh, this must be sleep paralysis. At first, I was freaking out, but I'm like, Oh, I'm just asleep, but I ain't. You know what I mean? It's like a weird in between, dude. I'm in purgatory. Yeah. But like every time they be talking shit, and I'm like, you motherfuckers wish y'all like y'all don't want this work. Now, have you ever heard of exploding head syndrome? Uh, I usually have to have an exploding head to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I'll have to come. 
Oh yeah, yeah there okay. you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I missed that. It flew right over my head. <laughs> I think Kyle I caught it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I assumed, but I wasn't gonna say anything in case I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. But now, what is it? Uh, oh, it's like it, I don't know if you've had. It's sort of like sleep paralysis, but it's like where you hear really loud sounds in your head, like as you're falling asleep. Like it's like louder than dubstep. It's like I wish I could like sound design this shit. Oh wow! It's, it sounds like. The gnarliest, loud, metallic screeches, and it's just like, I don't know what it is, if it's like some neurons misfiring or something, but it's like the loudest shit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Louder than a concert, but it's just in your head. I ain't never had that. Yeah. I've had some, I've sh- I've had some shit where I've been awake and I like see something that should be in a dream, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, whoa, yeah. and I couldn't explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, have you ever seen something like... In real life that you can't explain, you're like, what the fuck was that? Well, yeah, yeah. Like, but I'm not sure if it's, it's... Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. Like, when I was, like, a bit younger and, like, in those states where, like, you, you were, like, coming out of a dream or something like that or, like, the first time I got high on weed where I was, like, I'd, I'd, I'd have hallucinations, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was, like, I'd perceive something, but then I'd, like, look at it again and be something else. Got you, dude. I was completely sober. I was a child. Yeah. I was up in my bunk bed and I wasn't, I hadn't fell asleep yet. I was wide awake. Mm-hmm. And out in the hallway, you walk through the hallway and there's my sister's room. I watched this, I watched this girl in a long white dress, long black hair, walk past the hallway into my sister's room mm-hmm. and the whole power of the whole house went out. Oh boy. And I yelled my sister's name yeah. and she was in the living room and I was like, whole, I, I still have not forgot about that. That was yeah. the craziest Dude, thing. This is the thing I think is really cool is that I don't, you know, I think it's pretty clear that we don't understand everything that's going on. Yeah. You know, like I think people like to feel like they have everything figured out. You know, a lot of people sort of posture like they have everything figured out but you know i like to think that i don't know everything yeah you know i'm always trying to learn stuff and you know i mean that's why i'm like i feel like i teach you know is that i feel like it's uh, i'm on an ever ever going journey just like learning stuff about reality or you know music production or whatever it is you know it's like i i know that i don't know yeah i mean you're a big teacher yeah you know what i'm saying like i've i can't tell many of your youtube videos I've watched. Where really? You, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've seen them? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I have no idea. Like, I know, like, I see the numbers of, like, what people, how many people watch, but, like, it doesn't, it doesn't compute. Dude, I'm, no. I bet you you'd be shocked. Like, I bet you there's some crazy producers who'd be watching your videos trying to get some tips, dude. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you're a fucking smart-ass producer. Like, you're good. You know what I'm saying? You're going to try to stay humble right now, but you're fucking good, dude. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I think you're really good. To you. The stuff you were showing me earlier, like, I was like, damn, everything you showed me was great. Well, thank you, brother. But, yeah, yeah like, you're just so fucking technical, and you're always making videos, dude. Like, what made you want to start getting up on YouTube? And, I mean, I think you probably have, like, the best tutorial YouTube in oh, the game. You. Yeah. It's weird because it's like I'm not that big, you know, compared to, like, some other YouTube channels. But, like, I've hit the bass music niche, you know? Yeah. And, like, and also I feel like I've, like, spilled the beans on, like, some things in a way where it's like – uh, like in that, I guess my first like viral video was the me dissecting the Skrillex Ableton project. I don't know if you saw that I one. Saw that one, yeah. Yeah. And Mercive made me go watch that one. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Thanks, Mercive. Um, and um, yeah, that one uh, just because I, I guess I have somewhat of like a photographic memory to a degree, and so like as he was scrolling through Ableton on his screen, I could like map out like, oh, up in this section, he's got this going on, and down in this section, he's got this other thing going on, and then in my brain, I just like pieced it all together to figure out about some routing routing stuff that he was doing that I thought was interesting, and then I basically I made a those videos on like Skrillex routing and like having multiple limiters or going directly into Clipper and just like thinking about how you squish things together, you know, in groups and how they react to each other. Um, I, and yeah, I don't know. I just find all that stuff personally fascinating. And so I just made a video about something I was personally excited about. And, and also I like, I always feel like, um, when you can 
so many people have helped me get better at making music that I wanted to do something to help other people get better. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I'm a real big believer in karma. And so I try to um, do things that will generate goodness in the world. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah, I uh, and you enjoy doing it. Like, you enjoy making these tutorials, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes, like, if I put myself into, like, too rigid of a structure where I have to do something, then it's, like, it feels like a chore. But if I'm, like, allow it to be a little bit looser, then I'm, like, oh, I can do it, like, on the topics and interests when they come about. You yeah. Know? I have people ask me all the time to do, like, tutorials and shit, and that's just not something I enjoy doing. Yeah. I very much enjoy sitting down and talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? I enjoy well, you gotta you gotta find your joy in life. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. enjoy doing this show, so this yeah. is what I'm gonna do. But like I love that there's people like you who do enjoy doing that type of shit, dude. Yeah. Like I love I love watching like Eliminates, you know, his, oh, his yeah, YouTube. he's so funny. Yeah, he's funny, dude. Yeah. And he, you know, and he he'll he'll fucking write a track from a damn cat. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh no, I've seen the cat one. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, like he's a really good video editor. Yeah. You know, I, I think his like pacing, he's got humor, you know. I really like his videos. For mine, they're, like, more technical and, like, me just turning on the record. It's so funny because I'm, like, a, a music engineer, but, like, so so many times in my videos, like, the audio is recorded so poorly <laughs> on like, my vocals. You're like, where's your fucking integrity, dude? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, or it's, like, clipping or it's, like, yeah, you know, I just feel silly. I'm just, like, I'm just trying to record when I'm actually inspired, you know, and it's like, it's just me by myself. So if it messes up, then you deal with it. I'm just trying to get across the information. And if you get it, then you get it. Would you rather make a living as like a teacher? So like, say like, say like your YouTube blew up yeah. and you were like the number one production YouTube on the internet and you could have that. Would you rather have that or would you rather be touring as Ahi? Touring. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, well, both. I'm going to say both. Yeah, you can have both. Both. You can B O A F. Damn, he's saying it like me. Both. Both. <laughs> both. He's saying it with the southern accent, dude. <laughs> I'm from Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so you say. Yeah, so it's a it's a little bit in me, but I've been in California for so long that I got a little bit of both in me. Both. <laughs> Mitch caught some heat yesterday for saying pipe. He was saying pop, pop. I can't, I what? can't. He was saying, uh, yeah, I had, I had some weed in my pocket and a, and a pop. <laughs> pop. And, and everybody was like, are you saying pop? Yeah, dude, he was <laughs> like, what are you saying, bro? What are you saying? Dude, that's happened a lot out here to me. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I'll say something. And they're like, what are you saying? I don't, you know, language, uh, dialect is all different. It's like, know? I'm speaking English, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know. Have you heard, like, Cornish? Cornish? Yeah, like no. it, it's like South Wales, like Southern England. I'm, I didn't know Wales knew English, dude. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> New South Wales. And so, yeah, that whole area, like they speak English, but, man, you, it'd fly right over your head. You're like, I cannot understand a single word you're saying. Bro, I had these neighbors back in Louisiana, and uh, it was the first house I lived at. Across the street, there's some straight cooyons, bro, them Cajun people. Yeah. And all I saw, all I did, I'll be like, that. Yeah, that's, see, that, that, that's, 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 that's English. They sounded yeah. like that. And they were big duck hunters, yeah. right? And I uh, I was squirrel hunting and deer hunting. And I remember they were outside uh, cleaning up some ducks. Mm. And I was like, I went up and the conversation, I, it was getting lost. And I was like, squirrels or ducks? Oh, yeah, we're going to do that, yo. <laughs> oh, we're going to do that. We're gonna yeah, do we're going to do that. But that was like my first year living there. Now I understand it all. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, now yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, go oh, there, shy. Hold up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll be saying it back to him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't have too many friends that had that kind of dialect growing up. In Dallas, you know, Dallas, Texas, where I grew up, people don't have the heavy Texas accent. Yeah. You know, there's like a big old and a hey, howdy. Yeah. You know? But, I'm yeah, more of the hey, howdy. Yeah, I'm mean, yeah, dude, I remember the first time I played in Texas, they were making fun of my accent. I'm like, motherfucker, we are in Texas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we are in Texas. What are y'all talking about? Yeah, I mean, the cities, you know, they're like, the accent isn't particularly strong. It's more out in... True. I mean, Andre Comas, I mean, he's from New Orleans, but he grew up in the city his whole life, so he's got yeah. like a city boy accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, the accents differ there, but, you know, I definitely had some, you know, I was in Boy Scouts yeah. gr uh, growing up in Texas. Retouched? And, what? Uh, no, good, no, good. no. I was uh, or you know, depending. Good if if you wanted to not get touched. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, I was actually in the biggest Boy Scout troop in America. Damn, eighty two, and like we had like 
like every time we went out, it was like a festival because we had like 350 kids and like 300 dads. And so it would be like a 600, 700 person event. Like every time we went on like a Boy Scout camp. Out. That's crazy. And like there'd be like different like, uh, I forgot what they were called, but like groups of people, groups of like where there'd be a dad leader and then like 12 kids, you know. And, uh, you know, we'd have to hike in with our backpacks on through the heat, you know, or the cold or whatever it was. And um, yeah, the Texas cold. Yeah, oh, it can get cold. Yeah, there. it can get cold there. Yeah. yeah, it gets hot and cold. What's crazy about Dallas is that, like, the temperature can change 60 degrees in a, like, couple hours. That's, I kind of like that a little bit. Yeah, like, I'd have to go to school and I'd be, like, all hot and I'd bring a jacket because I knew later that day it'd be, like, way colder yeah and um yeah but doing boy scouts i think it was like a good balance for me because it like you know put me in touch with like how to survive if i was like out in the wild or you know how to make a fire Mm -hmm. how to cook you know food how to hunt how to canoe how to just you know tie a knot you know yeah uh not that i remember all those i was about to say yeah like are you able to utilize some of these tools later on in life oh for sure like where i live now you know like we we have like a gas heater up in arcada you know we live in the redwoods yeah you and your wife or girl uh, girlfriend girlfriend pretty much you know we've been together for eight years yeah so in the eye of the law yeah she's your wife yeah yeah pretty much and um yeah we uh we we have a gas heater, but then we also have to use a lot of wood just because it's not enough to like heat our cabin up there. So you know, I definitely use the the fire starting skills like pretty regularly during the winter, and um, just like the wood chopping and you know just handyman. You know, which is like I'm not very I'm not a big handyman, but like you know when you're out there, and I it's have just, to yeah, be. You gotta do, you gotta do it. Gotta do what yourself. you gotta do, brother. Like. Being up there, I'm learning a lot about because we have our own well, mm-hmm. or, or we share a well with some neighbors. But like, I had to like learn all the plumbing out there to like figure out how to make it work. Is uh, because like we put in like a new water tank and whatnot, and yeah, just like I don't know, going from like how to make a wub to <laughs> how do I make my water pipes work? <laughs> you know, like how to survive winter. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so part of me, like I appreciate the balance of mm. that, you know? No, nah, man, that sounds peaceful as fuck. Like honestly, if it wasn't for like me doing this podcast, I think I'd be living at my dad's farm up there in Arkansas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Northwest Arkansas, right outside of Fayetteville. Do you, do you like being out in nature? Love it. Yeah. Love it. Like, cause like it's nature's not just, nice it's pretty and beautiful it's also dangerous yeah i like a little bit of that i just like a little bit of like the simple living right Mm. so like my dad he's a farmer he's got like a very it's like these are what he's got to do today and everything else that's going on in the world doesn't really affect him right Mm -hmm. it's just a simple way of living he just he's in his own world take care of the animals make sure everything's good make sure all the land's fine it's just like that like he's not worried about Twitter. He's not worried about his Instagram followers or yeah, like yeah. you know he's not worried about oh, the offers man. for these shows. Yeah, it would be great to like have that mentality for a long amount of time because it's like, yeah, as an artist you have to. Yeah, you it's part of the job. It's, yeah, you got to wear that hat. Yeah, you know? uh, and it ain't a cowboy hat. No, no, no. It's like a, a chaos hat <laughs> yeah. of like oh my god, so many people's input. Yeah. You know, but also like, oh, I'm trying to like make the living, trying to do the thing. And yeah, you know, it works out yeah. when you do it right. Yeah. No, I, uh, but also at the same time, you can get stuck in your own world, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. like my dad, whenever the stuff's going on in the world, he don't quite understand. It's like, cause you're so disconnected, yeah, father. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's all like, you know, pros and cons mm-hmm. and, you know, balances between all these things yeah know? i say that like if i wasn't doing this podcast this is why i moved here this is what i want to do but i'm yeah, just saying yeah, yeah. like that simple living does sound a little nice at times yeah uh, especially you know uh, i feel like growing up you know and living that thing and grow i feel like you know i don't know did you grow up like without social media um i think i got a bebo in like the a what? sixth grade a bebo what's a bebo it was like uh it was like a social media thing man it was okay. like in the sixth grade Everybody was talking about Bebo, and that's where I would, like, find, like, music videos and shit. It's, like, okay. right when I just started using the internet. Yeah. And, like, I would have, like, an AIM instant messenger thing. Yeah, I never had an AIM. Yeah. I, I never had AIM. Is it AIM or AIM? I don't fucking – it doesn't fucking matter, AOL. dude. They ain't doing too hot anymore anyway. 
But uh, yeah, and I remember MySpace was dope, dude. Uh, that was the first one I got. Yeah, MySpace was dope. Yeah, and then um, yeah, but I just remember growing up in a time in which like I didn't have to think about that at mm. all. You know, like I'd just go skateboarding with my friends. You know, or we'd like you know go like sneak out on the weekend and go smoke some weed. You know, and just tell jokes and like laugh and we we do like some minor parkour stuff and just parkour yeah like we jump from like buildings to build we climbed a lot of buildings or like crane towers and whatnot oh that sounds safe like you know <laughs> <laughs> uh like uh you know those construction cranes that like go oh, yeah. up and then go out like oh, yeah. we would climb those and go out onto the thing and my friend growing up like he was you know he was like zen like zen master at like 18 years old and he'd go out onto these cranes with like nothing holding him up like he'd just walk out and balance and like go out all the way smoke a cigarette i'd go out halfway and like cling on to the the poles and i was like all right i'm going back this is as far as i'm going and my other friend like stayed like on the platform being like y'all are crazy yeah you fall you die <laughs> yeah yeah you know but like i don't know there was something exciting about that because like growing up in the middle of the city you know we were, we were looking for excitement yeah you know? but dude i mean i grew up a little bit with social media right but like it didn't like control me like i didn't care about how many friends i had yeah, or yeah. you know instagram one thing i didn't care about the followers like i didn't feel like i even cared about that until i started doing a music career because you kind of have to care about yeah, all yeah. the analytic stuff and yeah a lot of times that shit can be toxic but i now feel that at a point i now feel like i'm at a point where i'm like i'm just gonna do me and I'm literally just going to do that. Yeah. And so, like, if you like it, hell yeah. If you don't, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Well, it seems like we got some good response on the tour announcement today. Now, I'm not going to lie. Go to get the, your tickets. Yeah, I ain't going to lie, dude. I was looking at all everybody, you know. Yeah. People upset about not coming to their cities, <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you think about that? It's like people think take that personally, or do you think they're Oh, no, like, I'm going to look in the camera when I say this, dude. If we're not coming to your city, it's because you touch yourself at night and we fucking hate you, okay? <laughs> That's it. That's the only reason. <laughs> uh, see, this is why I'm excited to go on tour with you, man, because, like, you can... You you you, uh, you know how I have fun. Oh, yeah, dude. It's all yeah. fun. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I've been living my life over, like, with two, like, kind of... Not rules, because I ain't rules, but it's just, like, ways that make me feel, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's not one of these two things, I don't fuck with it. Yeah. Is it fun or is it funny? Mm. That's how I live my life right now. Is doing this fun or say, doing that or saying whatever, is that funny? Yeah. Then I'll I'll go with that. Yeah. If it's not either one of those things, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I ain't trying to do all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Guidelines. Yeah. Those By are taboo. Yeah, dude. Life lessons. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a fucking you life gotta coach. Get, you got to do a little, uh, you got to get in you know, one of those wigs, you know, and like teach yourself. You get I'll, a little dude, skit. I'll wear wigs sometimes just to, for the fuck of it. But yeah, dude. I mean, I might wear a wig and pretend I'm Ahi. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? And then, and then I just like lock you in a closet and take your flash drive. <laughs> fucking go play a set, dude. Dude, uh, I need a couple of you. <laughs> do that you know yeah. be in multiple places at one time yeah dude that'd be cool uh yeah dude i wonder if like marshmallow or like anyone like that can pull that off if he was just like man i'm not feeling it tonight let me hire a double yeah yeah, yeah. he could get away with it until he spoke oh yeah maybe yeah like so. what if it was just like a like a you know like a latina person under there like <laughs> i am marshmallow <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hola well, what yeah. about the the pickle dj i don't know what the fuck that is dude <laughs> You know what I mean? I feel it's like marshmallow pickle. I don't think it's marshmallow being pickle. It's kind. I mean, it's just like the cheesiest thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm not hating on it by any means, but it's yeah. just like, all right, how many more like industry plants can we throw out there for pe like for people to try to make money off of? Uh, I'm sure a lot more. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I people always joke. They're like, Chris, you should uh, dress up in a fish suit, and then you'll <laughs> finally blow up. They're like. That's when everyone will pay to go see you. They're like, we loved your music, but when you wear the fish suit, that's when I'm paying money. Yeah, yeah, I'm dude. paying that extra money. Yeah, we're not booking this guy until he puts on the fish outfit. Yeah, that's when I'm going to be playing Vegas. Dude, okay, I mean, I'll play. A f I'll, I'll wear a fish outfit with you on the tour. Fuck it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We should get some funny outfits. Yeah, no, I want to I get some. I have some good outfits already picked out. Yeah. 
you know, kind of theme it, you know what I mean? Because, you know, like I look at like, you know, Subdoct on the Strictly Business Tour. He didn't wear a suit a single time. It's true. Preston. You son of a bitch. <laughs> he wear a suit, dude. He was having too much fun. He was having too much fun, dude. Yeah. But how much more fun would it be if he was in a suit? Like this dude is Strictly Business. I mean, maybe it was the time of the tour. Maybe it was too hot. Should have done a winter tour with. The I don't suit. know, dude. Don't you know. look at AT Aliens; they fucking wear hoodies. And it's true, though. They are really dedicated. On super that. dedicated. I must be really. I mean, they get in the pool with that suit on. Yeah, you yeah. Know, well, I saw them at uh, what was it? Paradise Blue. Uh, it was the excision show in Cancun. Yeah, they were jumping in the pool with the alien masks and the full on hoodies, and it was hot and sunny. And I'm sure it felt great, dude. Yeah. yeah, I play with them at Sunset. It's in Florida in the middle of summer with that Florida humidity, Ooh. and they were on after. Me, yeah, I think they were on after me, and they're yeah. fucking wearing hoodies, a mask, long tight black jeans. I'm just like, y'all are wild. Yeah, I'm in like the shortest shorts possible. I think I might have had like a, a white beater on, dude. Like, just like, ooh, yeah, still but, sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they uh, I always like their videos where they go up and like touch their fans, yeah, like without them knowing. I right, yeah, it sounds really creepy when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I guess it is a little creepy, but also, I don't know, it's funny. When they walk up and touch their fans without them knowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll, like, sneak up behind them. You can see, like, his tattoo, and he'll be like, <sighs> Yeah, they said they were like, yeah, we want to come on the podcast and not say anything. We just want to oh sit here. Oh, my God. And I was like, I was like, if y'all do that, I'm going to be asking y'all questions that is going to make y'all look terrible. <laughs> so I'm like, so I heard you like to fuck kids, huh? <laughs> and, then, and then they just sit there in silence. Like those are the qu type of questions I'm gonna just hammer out them, you know. Yeah. Then that silence stick doesn't like <laughs> doesn't, doesn't work help. out for in that it's in that scenario. Silence is violence, dude. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> That's fun, dude. How long have you been doing music for? Oh, since I was eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So like you're thirty six. No, thirty five. Thirty five. Just uh, in May, I turned thirty five, and. Uh, yeah, like, I've just been constantly, like, I knew that I wanted to do music since I was six years old. I, like, it was funny. I had this, like, whole vision. I, I, like, I don't know what it was, but, like, I was looking at this corner in my childhood bathroom as a six-year-old. And somehow looking at this corner just, like, triggered this epiphany. And I was like, I'm going to be doing music. I'm going to grow up. I'm going to be a rock star. And what do you want to play? Do you when you're a kid? You're like, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I was going to do it. And then, um, and then afterward, I was like, there was some other aspect to it that was like a spiritual aspect to it, but like the rock star thing. And you sound like a pretty spiritual guy. Yeah, you know, I, I like to balance it because like I don't like to take it too seriously because. Uh, serious spirituality has led to mass deaths throughout history. That is true. You know, and so I like to... That and do, and people with penises. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you combine those things together. War. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. that that's how history is made. But, um, you know, I, I like to treat it in a way where it's like, it's important to me, but uh, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not judgmental or dogmatic it's uh just a way of me uh expanding my compassion and enjoyment with other people yeah, yeah. like do you, do you follow like the i think you said you said hinduism earlier right is that like is that something you like go by is no like the it's book more of it, it's more of like me i i'm really interested in history and just like what what reality is and um and so, like, I, I spend a lot of time, like, just, like, listening to, like, what other people, like, have thought throughout history and whatnot or different religions and whatnot just because I feel like there's, like, points of it that I can use to explain my own personal experiences rather than – it's, like, me trying to understand my own personal experiences rather than me trying to project something that I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I get that, dude. I, um, you know, I grew up in a pretty – um, I grew up in the Bible Belt, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Very, like, everything revolved around the church. Like, you know, if you were at school and you didn't go to, like, youth group on Wednesdays and church on Sundays, like, they didn't see you there. You're, like, instantly an outcast. So it was, like, very yeah. judgmental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which made me, like, <sighs> made me kind of, what's the word? It, it just it just turned me off of it. You yeah, know what I, I mean? mean, yeah, I was not interested in that form 
of religion whatsoever. Yeah. Because, like, I saw all the contradictions in people's behavior and their actions and words. And, and so, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to find my own thing yeah. in all this. Yeah, I felt like I was pretty atheist for a bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I was playing metal punk rock bands, you know, yeah. playing, hanging with the skater kids, you know, yeah. just fucking... You know, it was just... Uh, smoking that reefer madness? Yeah, dude, smoking booty hash. You know what I'm saying? That's what we had back home. We called it booty hash. But, uh, like, you know, it, I felt like I was pretty atheist for a bit just because yeah. all that turned me off of it. I think as I've gotten older, later on in life, I've, you know, come around to being a pretty spiritual guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think psychedelics really did it for me. Yeah? You know, where <laughs> Back like, on that topic, huh? Yeah, you know, well, it's like... <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, it's a good topic. It's a good it's a great topic. topic. I'm know, not scared of that topic. Yeah, there's a lot to it, you yeah. know? And, um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, I could have gone down the atheist route, but I, I don't know. I just, I don't like being bitter. Yeah. I don't like being, not saying that being an atheist makes you bitter, but uh, it's for some people I, I've seen it, you know, do that, where it's just like you, you sort of see the world not through rose-colored lenses, but through black lenses everything is always the worst and inter- possible interpretation of something and i was like ah, this just doesn't really fit my personality or you know what i want to be as a human being and so yeah you know i like um silly goofy fun and uh yeah adventurous yeah yeah a little bit more out of an optimistic fella yeah you, you know, know like kind of like a beer half cold type of guy <laughs> you know i i like uh more like, uh, let's see here. I don't know. What I like to do is just find my own way. Yeah, I think that's important, man. I I, I remember having a conversation about my about this with my mother. Mm-hmm. She's like a very you know, uh, Christian, God fearing lady. I don't even know why they say I'm a God fearing man. It's like, yeah. why do you fear him? I think the idea is is like you know. He's like a righteous uh, punisher. Yeah. You know, and so you you should fear him so that way you stay the right path. Yeah. But I remember having this conversation with my mother a while back because I was just like, you know, what if, like, I'm a good guy. Yeah. I believe in good. I believe in, like, ma- so let's say good is God, right? Yeah. So, like, all things that are good is God. Like, yeah. all right, I believe in God. But maybe I don't believe in your version of God. Is your version of God still going to accept me into heaven if that's where we're all going? If that's a thing? And then my mom was like, "That's a good point." You know, it kept her, yeah. made her think a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I'm, I'm not saying like I'm not a bad guy. I'm not uh, saying that there's not a heaven or a God. But maybe my version of it's different from yours. Yeah. Does your version of God hate that? You know what I mean? Maybe that's yeah. why you fear God in that scenario. Yeah, a lot of people come up with all sorts of reasons for what they believe, and if, you know, it's like justifying all the terrible stuff that people do sometimes, or the good stuff. You know, well, it's constantly changing too, because you know, like they used to hate gays. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And now yeah. God wears a rainbow robe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, saying, yeah. "Come in, bitch." It's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> welcome. You know, <laughs> it's changed, dude. Which I think is good. You know, you would think uh, if there was like a God. He would kind of, you know. I think he would love everybody. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, and not necessarily be even a he. You know, it, it's just like it's oh, this, this, this force of love. What if God had some fat tits? <laughs> Never mind. I can, you got a little <laughs> spot bubble above you right there and a little animation of it. <laughs> like God's a baddie, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn. That'd, uh, be, that'd be pretty cool. You never know. You know, I, I'm not going to claim to know. No, I'm not going to either. But, yeah, I I guess, like, my thing is just, like, I, I guess a couple of years ago, whenever, like, I just felt very blessed, mm. I felt like a part of a plan almost. You know what I mean? Like, this is with the plan that was in place for me. The devil's plan? No, maybe. Maybe whenever I sold my soul. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm just doing the devil's work. work. I thought I was doing the Lord's work. He's deceiving. Oh, fuck. What if the devil has some fat tits? <laughs> <laughs> we need another thought bubble. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that made me sell my soul. Jesus Christ. No, nah, no, probably not. Uh, probably not. You don't think so? You don't claim to know? I, I don't know. This is weird but fun conversation. I like I like the uh, the openness of talking about this. Yeah? Yeah. Me too. I like that. I like this too. I like that, dude. Yeah. What do you expect from Blue Collar Base Tour? 
Uh, what are you expecting these crowds to be like? Rock star shit. Rock star shit? Yeah. <sighs> I think that's what we're going to experience. I feel like we're about to kind of just be like... Some silly shit. Yeah. I feel, <laughs> I feel like we're about to have the damn Wookalos, dude. We're going to have the Juggalos of bass music at our shows, dude. <laughs> dude, <laughs> have you seen the Juggalo documentary? No. Dude. It changed. Like, I thought Juggalos were one thing growing up. Cause I, I mean... I had some friends that were into it in Oklahoma. I'd go to like summer camp. In I'm Oklahoma. into it. Yeah, but I just ain't watched the documentary. I've oh, been no. I've been to some. some oh, yeah, events. have you been to yeah, the been, gathering? Not to the of gathering now. Okay, so this is a documentary on the gathering of the Juggalos. I really respect that community now after after watching the documentary because it's about love. You yeah, know? it's about community. Family. It's about family there. Whoop whoop. whoop whoop. You know, and so like I really respect that after seeing that documentary and just seeing it through their own eyes yeah i like it because it just feels like my people it's like you know just really white trash folks just fucking partying with fago dude it's a fucking vibe dude i literally watched this it was about i went to go see my uh i'm a fan of this band attila and uh the metal band and they were doing a co-headline tour the icp and i went for attila yeah and icp went on after and they you know they they sprayed the juggalo bo- uh the um the fa- uh, fago bottles out right yeah they like launched a bottle like a rocket and it came at me, and I, I, I ducked down, and it hit this lady in the face. She fell down. Her face was cut up. I'm like, holy shit. She stands up, rips her shirt off, titties out, grabs the rest of the Fago, pours it on her, does like a war call, and runs into the mosh pit. And I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's the kind of energy, yeah. you know, that we want to make. Yes. <laughs> if we can have some shit like that at Blue Collar. Makes. Come out. That's what we're going to expect. <laughs> But it was fucking awesome, dude. It was sick, dude. But yeah, that's fun. That 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 story. I don't know. This sort of reminds me of a, a, a near miss in my own story. I, I did running. Of the, have you heard of running of the bulls? Yeah. You, you know, in Pam, in Spain, where like everyone runs away from the bulls. <laughs> you know about that, right? No, it sounds awesome. Though. Yeah. So I, I I did that as a as a teenager. You um, ran from bulls, dude. Okay, so if you don't know. Basically, there's this town called Pamplona in Spain, northern Spain, and like every year they have this thing called running the bulls, and it's like really dangerous, run through the streets, and these bulls chase you, and that's all we knew. And so (laughs) me and my friends, we show up, just got out of high school, going on a Europe trip, you know, we drop our backpacks off, we get show up to the city, whole city smells like piss and beer, like everywhere you go smells like piss and beer. And uh, so like we're Orleans. like in the in the middle of like the city, and there's a crowd, and we're like, "So where's the running of the bulls? I don't understand what's happening." And then you hear a cannon go off, and you're like, "Oh shit, that was loud!" And then you start to feel the ground rumble, oh, no. and then you're like, "Wait!" And then you hear people yelling in the distance. And then you see the bulls come around the corner. You're like, oh, my God, we're in it. And then we bolt. And we run. And if you try to jump over the edges, the Spaniards try to punch you back in. That's fucking awesome. And like, and so, like, there's no escape. You have to run the thing. And it's, like, it's about, like, a mile. How many people die at this event? One person died. Okay. Uh, it, so when we show up, it's mostly... Americans, English, and Australians. These fucking white idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then, uh, unfortunately, the guy that died was a Spaniard. And so it's like most of the locals there know not to do it. Yeah, it's they're like, more, we got plenty of dumbass white people yeah, to come yeah. here and do this, man. That's awesome. And so the thing is, is that they don't tell you about this event. Is that after you've done the the mile run away from the bulls, is that they it ends in a coliseum. And it's just full of drunk Spaniards drinking sangria. Yes, dude. I was just thinking to myself, I want to get hammered with the boys and just yeah. not be in the event and just watch it. It's like, yeah, yeah. you know, watching like, you know, like uh, the Monster Jam or something like that. Yeah. So they, the thing is they, they lock you in the arena with the bulls for an hour. And you're just having to dodge? S- survive for your life <laughs> for an hour with a bunch of s- Spaniards screaming their head off being like this the best thing ever oh dude imagine this event with just like the people who are running are like your favorite djs it'd be hilarious like these fucking <laughs> these fucking computer there nerds. goes diplo yeah, these fucking computer nerds dude <laughs> and, and just trying to survive he, he leapfrogged over the bull so no i was i had so much testosterone running through me and adrenaline that i 
felt like I could grab the bull by the horns and throw him down. Did you try? No, because some part of back of my brain was like, That's no, stupid. you can't do that. <laughs> That's not physically possible. That thing's way stronger than you. Yeah, it is. And then, uh, but I did go up and um, I slapped the bull on the ass. Nice. And then it turned to like face me and start running towards me and someone else slapped it and then like went after them. So I was... I was pretty lucky right there. Damn, bro. These bulls are just angry, man. Yeah, well, you know, if a bunch of people slapping you on the ass, I'd be angry, too. You know, I, I get excited <laughs> about it, you know? I'm like, harder. A bunch of strangers. <laughs> harder. Non-consensually. Yeah, it happens, brother. You know, sometimes it's funny. You know, sometimes I'm like, hey, that kind of hurt. Yeah. So the thing that reminded me of it was that they, they round up the bulls, like, every, I don't know, how, however many minutes, and then they'll... They'll they'll put them in some pen and then they'll let them out one at a time. And when they let them out one at a time, it's like there's this dark entrance in which they come through. And people line up in rows right in front of the entrance in two rows, about like 10 people across. Are they playing Red Rover with a bull? Yeah. And so basically the idea is, is that you get down on your hands and knees and the bull jumps over you. That's a lot of trust. Yeah. And so I did that because I saw it happen twice and I was like, okay, I'm stupid. I'll do that. <laughs> and so here's me and here's some guy. I'm on the second row, like maybe third over and me, some guy, the bull comes running. You can just hear clump, clump, clump. And then you just see out of the shadow, just giant bull. And in that moment, you're like, I made a mistake. And then in that moment lands on the guy next to me. Oh. Giant bull thigh right in my face, and me being like, "I gotta get out of here." What a story! Oh my god, yeah, yeah. That was that. What did, did the, the bull successfully jump over all the other people prior to that moment? Yeah, damn. And that that time, that guy got hit in the face with a hoof. Yeah, that's like a lot of trust in an animal that ain't yours. That's like out there trying to maul you. Yeah, yeah. It's like you trust his instinct to jump over you and. Uh, the, by the third round, I was a little tired. <laughs> what is there a winner? Is there a winner of the event? Uh, whoever survives, you win. <laughs> yeah, you're a winner. I I guess I felt like a winner. I got out of there and I was like, I'm out of this city. What made you want to go do this? Um, I was 19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, I dude! Was my my best friends out of high school, <laughs> pack pack backing through Europe with no parents or chaperone for the first time. Oh, dude, were you producing at this point? Uh, yeah, I was making music. I was actually, I, I, I was going to go to college for music, for uh, music tech. Uh, but back then I wasn't making like bass music. I was making uh, IDM. Uh, yeah, 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 intelligent yeah, so, dance music. Yeah, you know, whatever the name. But uh, I was really inspired by Aphex Twin. And so like that's basically all I was doing at that time was making electronic dance or sorry, um, non-dance electronic music. Yeah. Uh, but I was making it out of found sounds. Uh, so, like sounds you found? Yeah, yeah, like uh, like sounds I recorded. Gotcha. And so, like, that's what AHI is, like, an acronym for. It stands for A Human Expressing Experience. But you're all about aliens. Yeah, yeah. What's up with you and the aliens? Um, Just my personal experiences. You, like, you, you seen an alien? Well, like, I've had, like, my personal experiences sober and on psychedelics that have shaped me to the degree that I've, Put it on fucking everything I do, you know. Um, like I have a, a sober experience where I saw UFO. I don't think it was aliens. I think it was some military thing. But I was like at this festival called Firefly Festival in Arizona. Yeah, it happened in like 2014, something like that. And um, basically, I was with one of my best friends out there uh, who runs sound at the National UFO Congress, and so like. Uh, he was like my roommate in college, and so I'd hear from him like what all these like he would go to the National UFO Congress and sit there at the soundboard and listen to them uh, the whole time. And so like he'd come back and just tell me all these things that people had, would talk about at those conferences. And so uh, we we're at this festival and we we're just having this conversation. And I was like looking at this bright star and just being like, man, that thing's really bright. I don't recognize it. Like, wonder what that is. Maybe the just this different night sky right now. And then, you know, five minutes goes by and my friend's like, oh, actually, there's a UFO right there. And uh, I'm like, no, nah, it's a star. I've been looking at it for five minutes. Like, that's, that's 
it hasn't been going anywhere. And he's like, no, it's interlinked with consciousness. Now that we've recognized it, it will move. And as soon as he says that, this thing leapfrogs like at least a third way across the horizon and then does like this sharp angle up into the sky and disappears. Whoa. And I was just like, I'd never seen anything move like that before. Yeah. And and so that was, uh, you know, a, an experience sober uh, with something that I never, I, I didn't, it, it defied physics. It yeah. defied physics, you know, and it was very obvious and multiple people saw it and I was sober. Um, and then I've had other experiences while I've been high where I've, uh, experienced some alien form of consciousness, mm. uh, where, uh, one of my, I guess, best stories is, um, I stepped out of my body onto a UFO. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. On LSD. Whoa. Yeah. Damn, there must have been some strong LSD, bro. I only had one hit. Must have been some strong <laughs> LSD. That's what I'm saying, dude. You stepping out your body. Well, see, this is the thing is that I, I feel like I've never taken a lot of psychedelics. It's just the ones I have taken have been, good. Have been really strong or really intense or I'm just really susceptible to them or something. I, I have no idea. But, um, yeah, it's like... Um, I went on a hike with a friend up in uh, Placerita Canyon, which is like uh, in Southern California. And uh, basically we're up on this hill and this ship appears about the size of a manhole cover about 200 feet off. And when I saw it, I like had an emotional like connection with it. Like, you know, like imagine like a knight seeing its trusty steed after mm. a long battle mm. and like the emotion being like, Oh my God, you survived. You're still here. I miss you. You know? And like it moved through the air as if the ship was made of water and the air was made of rocks. Damn. So it like could coagulate, but retain its form without disturbing any of the air molecules. Do you think that's just, do you think that's aliens or do you think that's just a different dimension from, uh, you're in from psychedelics? Um, well, I think they're, they could be the same. Okay. They, I, I like, I, I think that, you know, our conception of aliens as like this other thing doesn't necessarily have to be something that lives on another planet. Like it could be just another form of intelligence that just, exists within a, a unfound pocket of reality. Okay. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. I yeah. like that. I like that. Yeah. I'm pretty skeptical about like the, uh, like I, like, like I was pretty skeptical and then, and then I heard like the Bob Lazar story mm -hmm. and then like the commander Frazier story. And I was like, holy shit. You know what I'm Those saying? Those are excellent stories. Yeah, like holy shit! Yeah, the Bob, all the, all the things to back it up. And the like, Bob Lazar one particularly, and and so actually, I've been, I love the Bob Lazar story. To it's the amazing. Point, like where I've tried to find every interview with him to like find more details, and uh, I have this theory on how I connect base and how UFOs work. A connect base? No, like I try to connect, like I try to use. The f my understanding of the physics of sound and waves oh. with how um, uh, UFOs could work. Okay. You want to hear this? Please. Yeah. So it's like, Please. Um, so have you heard of um, uh, gravity waves? Uh, I've heard it, I've heard of gravity waves. Yes, I've yeah, heard it. It's of like a new thing. You oh, know? it's new. Yeah, it's a new discovery. It sounds like a joke you're about to give me. Have you heard of gravity waves? It's like, yeah, we've discovered <laughs> <laughs> about to hit some something heavy. But um, yeah, so there's these two devices called LIGO, uh, and one's in Florida, one's in or wait, one's in Washington State, and one's somewhere in the South. Uh, I forgot where, but um, but basically they're mile long vacuum tubes with a laser shining through it. And uh, when a, a, gravity wa a gravity wave occurs when two black holes collide or a black hole and a neutron star, and it creates such a massive force that it creates a ripple in space-time itself. Mm. And those ripples are detectable with LIGO, these LIGO like laser tubes. Because what happens is that when space-time ripple passes over Earth, the, uh, the phase of that laser changes like you know like the phase of a waveform mm -hmm. like that we're getting some nerdy shit right now mm -hmm. but um 
basically it it goes out of phase because time the time that it takes for the laser to travel that mile in the vacuum tube changes because time and space has compressed and expanded based upon where you are in the gravity wave because it's a wave. Like so, instead of a flat you're losing line, me. You're losing me. Bring it back. Bring so it back. like, imagine a fucking base wave. Okay. You know, and that shit's all wiggly. Yep. And whatnot, and it goes like up a and sine down. Wave or something. A sine wave. So imagine in the sine wave, at the top, it's compressed. Mm-hmm. It's closer together, mm-hmm. or at the bottom, it's closer together, as opposed to a flat line that's like even all the way out. And so it's because of those wiggles, um, time and space act differently. Um, and, and so it's like time and space actually wiggle like a sine wave. Okay. When the gravity wave passes over us. So does that does that wave change when the gravity passes over us or we're just able to just detect it? It's like almost like we're um, in a, a pond, a still pond. And when a gravity wave hits, it's like th- uh, throwing a rock, throwing a rock gotcha. in it. And we're, we're experiencing the ripples. Gotcha. Thank and you so, for putting it in those terms. Yeah. 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 So, um, from that, I'm like, well, okay, well, if gravity is a wave that's confirmed, then what other things can you do with gravity that waves can do? So like, I think of all the shit that we do inside of the synthesizer, like resonance, you know, like what if you could resonate gravity since it's a wave? And so, like, I was thinking, like, you know, there's also this idea that anything with mass also has gravity. And so there's this, like, technically this ambient field of gravity everywhere in the universe. So what if you could resonate a moment, a a particular spot of gravity and basically, like, wiggle that so the gravity gets bigger and it attracts you to that moment? Or to that space. Pulls you to it. Yeah, and so instead of, like, being propelled, like, explosions, we're attracted. So you basically fall towards mm, your destination. Like surfing surfing gravity to a certain point. Yeah, surfing gravity. Okay. Yeah. Got you. I'm thinking waves, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, Surf, exactly. Yeah, well, the, whole, the whole epiphany is that gravity is a wave. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, well, if gravity is a wave, what other aspects of waves can you do? Yeah, so how do you relate that to aliens? Uh, is that maybe that's how these UFOs work? Are coming here? Well, the the spacecraft that they were talking about with Bob Lazar is that he can can literally control gravity, and it's like a it's like a gravity sail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that's why I'm saying it's like maybe it, it, it works off this gravity, you know. And like I'm just thinking, as like I understand music production, you know, maybe there's some like crossover between music production and how ufos work mm. just because it's all waves bro you fucking are wild <laughs> <laughs> i don't know this shit it's interesting it's interesting me. as fuck and, and listen yeah. I'm, I'm i'm all for this conversation it's awesome like it's definitely having me thinking like yeah i mean because we know how to manipulate waveforms right gravity waveforms maybe we could figure that shit out dude yeah. maybe we just need to isotope trash the universe dude just, right there, just start pulling. Throw a sausage fattener on the <laughs> on the fucking gravity waves. <laughs> See, you know, like we can go full out on this analogy. Yeah, man, that's crazy. All right, so do you think these are aliens that we're being visited from, or do you think it's us from the future? I don't know. Isn't that crazy? Because you, you know, like all the things that, like all the technology we have to capture these motherfuckers, they're so slick yeah. and so good. Well, I mean, that we can barely. The we, world's we, big. It's really big, but also like, bro. Everyone's got a 4K recording device in their phone. Have you tried phone. to film the moon with your iPhone? It doesn't work. I can honestly say I have not tried to film the moon with my or iPhone. Or like the stars or like, you know, like even despite, you know, we got some great technology. You yeah. know, it's like um, still the shit's limited, especially if you're dealing with something that's like putting a sausage fattener on some gravity waves. You yeah, know, like, like we, we don't have to do that yet. <laughs> iPhone can't capture that. Yeah, dude, you need to go just sit down with SpaceX. Be like, listen, y'all. Isotope trash <laughs> this bitch up. <laughs> dude, Elon, just trash your whole trash thing. Trash it all. <laughs> this is all stupid. <laughs> what y'all have going on is dumb. We need to do this. We need an OTT. We're, we're, <laughs> we're bass music producers. We make dubstep. We know we what's know going what we're on. talking about. We know what we're talking about, dude. <laughs> so yeah, I like to joke that like you know somehow dubstep is making us realize 
alien technology closer. So Damn, dude. I feel like if aliens came down, if they probably did like a style of music, they would probably like dance music the most. I don't know why. Yeah, all oh, the bass waves. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think there's something to that. Like you can feel it in your butt. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Or like I could feel do like aliens have butt assholes. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope like, so. Like do they know like when they're probing people what that's what's going on? Or are they like, just like, Yeah, it's the whole I'd hope they'd be like, oh, you're about to enjoy this. <laughs> He's loving it. You know, like, what if, what, what if, like, it was, like, a probe, like, you know, aliens grab me to probe you, and you're like, is that all you got, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> is that all you're going to put in there? You oh, fuck your God. mother with that dick? Like, try talking dirty to him or something? I don't know. I don't know if they use language like that. I hope so, dude. I hope they talk. I hope they talk shit. You know what I mean? Like, I hope they come down and start talking. Yeah, I need shit. some visuals like that, dude. I this feel shit like talking aliens, <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, if aliens came down, <laughs> honestly, dude. If I'm being honest, if an alien, a UFO came down and an alien came in my yard, I'm gonna shoot them. <laughs> You're in my maybe, maybe that's why they haven't come. They're like <laughs> these fuckers are crazy. Yeah, I, I just see someone in my yard doing some weird shit at night. You're getting a gun pulled on you. I'm sorry. Well, that's why all the the stories they tend to like, you know the person's paralyzed, you know, and like driven up by the light. Yeah. You know, Cause they know how we react. Hell yeah, dude. They better hope they don't beam me up with my damn, <laughs> with my weapons. <laughs> uh, that's why I stay, I sleep strapped. I do. I, I, I do. I literally do. <laughs> damn dude. Yeah. Honestly, like, yeah. If, if like a motherfucker came down in Alabama, you fucked up. You know what I mean? Like, then aliens come down, they're like, oh, we're going to go meet a human. And they go down to, like, some hick guy in Alabama, dude. Like, you know, I'm fucked up. It's like, you didn't see the no trespassing sign. We don't do uh, warning shots here. <laughs> oh, man. My neighbor has that sign. Yeah, dude. My dad's got that sign. <laughs> my neighbors are amazing. We uh, saved our neighbor's life. I love that. Yeah. On- I pulled a gun on my neighbor. Yeah. But two of them, not here, but in Louisiana. Uh, they still like you? Oh yeah, we're great. Oh good, cool. It was just a weird. It was a you know, fucking one of them walked in my house and I was working. He was knocking at my door while I was working. Yeah. I didn't hear. I didn't hear the knock, and then I hear my dog growl because someone came in the door. Yeah, and I had a, my gun right there on the desk, yeah. and so I just walked in there like. And he was like, yo, 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 Mitch. <laughs> yo, Mitch. He was like, yo, I, I was I was knocking. You couldn't hear me. I was like, oh, that makes sense. What's up, bro? And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> it was like, it was instant. You know what I mean? Another time, my, my neighbor was drunk as fuck trying to walk home, and she bumped into my car, then bumped into my carport wall, and then hit the ground, and I hear just a big commotion in my carport oh, at like 1 a.m. So yeah. obviously, you're getting a gun pulled on you. Yeah. So, but they, I mean, they, they understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's 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 reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's I, reasonable. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't just like, hey, how's it going, Mitch? Shut yeah, the I'll fuck, fuck up. up. You know what I'm fucking <laughs> like? You know, <laughs> Did you read the sign? <laughs> no warning shots. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they were they were they had reasons behind them. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But how'd you save your neighbor's life? Oh, so it, it was when we were visiting this place that we're living at. Um, we were there with uh, my girlfriend, uh, my. Uh, a friend of mine and like this other guy. And I was actually up on top of the hill uh, that we live on. And so I couldn't hear it, but basically our neighbor was chainsawing a redwood tree stump from the bottom and it fell on him. And he's like in his mid seventies and um, it crushes his pelvis and both his femurs and some, and some uh, ribs. And basically they hear him yelling for help and they run off and like crowbar this redwood tree. Like this Their stump huge. is like bigger than this room. Fuck. Or it's about the same size as this room. Fuck. Yeah, in width and yeah, it's circumference. It's big. And so like they levy this thing or lever this thing off of him and basically call the ambulance. And you know, six months later, this guy's a character. Six months later, this guy's doing backpacking trips. <laughs> Wild dude, because he's like carrying two. He's like his whole thing is like life's guaranteed to cause you pain. It's about how you deal with it. Yeah, and I'm like, damn, like you're in your mid seventies and like you're just. I, I respect that. Yeah, you know? life there's a curveball. Sometimes you got to take it in the ass and go to first base. Yeah, that sounds like a good saying. I've never heard that Have saying. You, that that's a first. I think I just made that this up. This is a taboo original. That's good. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. I like that. You gotta write it down. Or you gotta remember it. You, you gotta record it. It's this will be on the internet forever. 
That's why Isn't I live that's in trippy? both. Yeah, it's so crazy. You know, so much crazy shit that's on the internet. Yeah. You know. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Now, now my my alien stories are on there. I love it, dude. This has been a fucking. I've been wanting to share those. No, dude, I love I love this conversation, man. It's yeah. been fun. We talked about aliens, religion, psychedelics, music. It's been fun. Yeah. That's what I love love about doing this show, dude. You never yeah. like I don't have any I don't have any guidelines what we're gonna talk about. I just want to know a little bit more about you, get inside yeah. what you think about, dude. It's fun. And then we're gonna go on this whole tour. Yeah. We get to really know each other. Yeah, dude. Uh, we should do like we should do fucking drugs and look at the sky for aliens. Which part of the sky? <laughs> Is there a certain part I should look at? <laughs> I don't know. Certain hemisphere? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, uh, some people say southern hemisphere. Really? I, uh, I, I don't know. I've just heard that. I don't really know. I mean, uh, it seems like most of the UFO things are like, you know, I guess I actually know it's pretty popular in Mexico. Like, uh, that's a thing. Like, I don't know. That a lot. My friend that went to the UFO Congress, he said a lot of the people there were from Mexico. Hmm. Yeah. Like, Holmes, you see the UFO? <laughs> <laughs> you see that UFO, Holmes? <laughs> see? Yeah. That's fun, dude. God, yeah. Oh, uh, dude, I want to see one. I, you know, I really hope in our lifetime. That we, like, understand what the heck's going on We find that. out. We have, like, the most solid it piece of evidence. It feels like we're close. It, it does. It feels like we're closer than we've ever been before. Yeah, dude. You know? I really hope in our lifetime it's just, like, breaking news. We have made contact. We're like, holy fuck. See, and I, then you have to go back to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like nothing changes. <laughs> you, like, check it on. You're like, oh, on the Twitter feed. Oh, aliens are real. Okay. Back to paperwork. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, know? Nothing changes. Yeah. Oh, man. Or, like, dude, I hope aliens are attractive. You know what I mean? Do you think aliens think we're hot? I have no idea. Dude, because an alien could be like... keep on touching the butt stuff, but I don't know. But I don't know if, like, if that's, like, sexual or if that's just, like, oh, they got a hole. We got to explore it, you know? Yeah, it's an easy way to get into somebody. Um, But, like, yeah, dude, like, uh, like, I mean, we have, like, different, you know, animals in this world. What if, like, an alien's a fucking shark? Oh, see, this is the thing that from... I, I always feel like... Just like there's so many different personalities of humans, yep. I would imagine that that same diversity of spectrum of intentions is going to exist in in alien world. Damn, so we get like a redneck alien? Dude, maybe. Dude, that'd be sick, Maybe dude. we're the redneck aliens. Oh, hell. Oh, shit. Damn. Yeah, dude, maybe we're the fucking hicks of space. Fuck. Got you thinking. Fuck. See this? You need a you need a alien like with a PBR kind of thing, dude. I would drink PBR with an Ameri- uh with an alien and show him what American beer is really like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, look, space is cool, but America, dope. Who knows? Maybe we're <laughs> like the vacation spot. Oh, maybe. Maybe they just watch us for their entertainment. Yeah, you know. Yeah, what if we're just a reality television show to them? I mean. There's chaos here. There's chaos. There's <laughs> constantly shit going on. You know, there's plenty enough to keep them entertained. Fuck, dude. So who knows if they even, like, if entertainment's a thing or if they're just, like, slightly, like, robotic. Yeah, it's right, like they're yeah. they're just processing information. Yeah, they're just, they're just like, cyborgs, walking cyborgs. Well, like I said, I think there's probably a variety of, like, personality types. Yeah, dude. I hope I meet, like, a... Like a thick bitch alien. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be hot. <laughs> <laughs> this has been fun, dude. We got some questions I want to get to. Kyle, do you have anything you wanted to ask Mr. Ahi? Uh, sure, I got something. Uh, uh, Ahi slash him? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> up, dude. Well, I sometimes I identify as a human, sometimes as an alien, sometimes as a fish. I've been holding on to this this whole time, dude. <laughs> ah, Ahi slash him, brother. I'm sorry, Kyle. Go ahead. Uh, so if you could travel back in time to any point in our human history, what time would you travel to? Damn, Kyle, with the questions. Damn. Two days in a row of these heaters, dude. <laughs> any time in human history? Like, would I have to stay there? You'd have to be there for, I'd say, maybe a day, 24 oh, hours. Oh, just a oh, day? Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, I mean, I guess like what comes to mind is I'd really want to go back 10,500 years ago. Why? Because, like, that's, like, just, like, around, like, when humans were first, like, building stuff, but, like, before any major civilizations, and, like, that's when, like, Egypt was, like, green. Like, that whole northern, like, the the Sahara, northern part of Africa, that used to be all green, and so, like, part of me is just, like, 
you know, what's underneath that desert, like how it's changed so much. Like I would, I'd be really interested to see like what was life like, you know, when it was just like a totally different landscape. Damn. I think I'd go back to a time before R. Kelly started touching kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I could still enjoy his music. You know what I mean? Oh, Where everyone's singing the hits, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's a great time. That was a good time. Uh, my, my other answer would have been the 90s. I <laughs> said so the 90s. Yeah, there we go. You know, that was a good time point in history. I feel so. Yeah, that's a great question. Any more questions for him, Kyle? Uh, no, that's it for me, but we do have some here. Cool, like, cool. Up. Yeah. Hey there, guys. Um, big fan of Utah. Really can't wait to see you in like 16 fucking days at this Canyon. It's going to be fucking hype as fuck. Hell yeah. I don't think anybody has any idea. I don't. Um, but I kind of have a question for a he. I just wanted to know how it was on the, um, the subsidia record label with Excision, how it is, you know, releasing songs with, with them on those, on all those volumes and stuff. Um, anyways, have a great day, guys. Again, I love you, Daddy Taboo. Hey, I love you too. You also have a good day, dude. All right, Ahi, um, <laughs> what was it like with Subsidia, man? How, how was that all put together? I, I was really impressed working with them. Like, they, they're a great team. Um, like, they, they really did it for the right intentions of, like, helping, like, artists come up. And that's been really cool. Um, just because, like, you know, Excision is, like, the big dog, you know? Yeah, he's and, the man. You know, and, like, he's he's he, he's putting in the effort to, like, keep the community alive and fresh. And uh, so it not just, like, me working with them, but just seeing what they're doing just with, like, everybody that they work with, it's, it's really cool. And I think it's helped out a lot of people. Like, I remember when I first joined on, like, my, like, uh, Instagram grew by like 8,000 followers in a day. That's a big jump. I was like, it was like one of those moments where my phone was just going, and I was just like, dang, you know, like the power of excision. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, I, I released an EP with them, uh, Time Warp Energy, and yeah, they were just really accommodating to me wanting to be all alien and UFO themed, and they were just really hype on just like allowing me to do what I want as long as everything was quality, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, they've been really great to work with. That's what's up. You got to meet the big X-Man? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jeff's, um, it, it, well, I think it's so cool is that, like, you know, after the show, he has, like, a team meeting, and, like, they talk about what they could do better next time. That's really cool. I was like, you're really dedicated. I respect that. Yeah, he does throw some dope-ass events. Yeah. Like, there's so much going on, you know? Yeah. Like, with... Like th when you're running that big of a show. Yeah. You know, and so it's like I, when I'm at those shows, I'm like, f I feel like I'm trying to constantly learn. I'm like, okay, y'all are doing this and that and like this is going on and you got a crew for this. And yeah, I just, uh, it, gets, it gets me going, you know, it gets me juiced to like grow and build. Yeah, I love that. Getting inspired from other people who started out as you and made it big time, dude. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so, that's always cool as hell. Good question. It's another one, Kyle. All right. What's up, y'all? Uh, this is Alex from uh, Orlando, Florida. What up, Alex? And uh, I got a, I got two questions for y'all. I got uh, two for both y'all. Uh, so a serious one. Um, I know you guys have been working with the uh, DAWs for a long-ass time. Uh, so I'm just wondering, why have you guys stuck with Ableton? I'm an Ableton person myself, and I've dabbled with some of the others, and I like the layout of Ableton. But... There's so many other DAWs out there. Like I know Easy Baked uses Reason. Uh, I've heard Leet started using uh, Bitwig. I know Tipper likes to use Logic. Um, but with this, so many other uh, DAWs out there, uh, why have you guys stuck with Ableton? And a second question, a silly question. Uh, if you're a fish, what <laughs> kind of fish would you want to be and what kind of fish would you want to fuck? Hell like, yeah! <laughs> I would want to be like a swordfish, and I would try and fuck like a like a bluefin tuna or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, I'll watch out for those swordfish. Yeah, dude. I'm a fucking. T what are you thinking, ahi, ahi tuna? What you gonna uh, fuck, dog? Uh, maybe a sea anemone. A sea anemone. Yeah, those are the ones that are all like goopy, and uh, the, I guess it's not a fish. It's more of a, like a creature, hmm. like a coral. I don't know. I'm it a, seems like that would be soft. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm going to be a largemouth bass, and I'm going to fuck a smallmouth. 
you know? Like a small mouth bass. Assert dominance? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, dude, it's simple for me for the Ableton, dude, because Ableton's cooler. Yeah. You know, if you don't use Ableton, you don't get no pussy. <laughs> you know, everybody knows it. Every it's a, it's a it's it's everybody knows it. It's true. If you don't use Ableton, you're lame. Y'all out there, <laughs> get on it. <laughs> you give them a serious answer. Mine, <laughs> mine's never going to be serious. Uh, uh, I don't know. I I mean, before uh, Ableton, I was using Acid. I mean, you seem like you use acid <laughs> quite a bit, you know. <laughs> no, I I loved saying that. I was before I did any drugs. As like a, a fourteen year old, I'd be like making music on this program called Acid Pro by Sony, and I was just like, I make all my music on acid. Nice. I fucking love saying that. That's fine. And I got into Ableton because a friend of mine was like, you know, you can use EQs and compressors and stuff, and you don't just have to use waveforms. I was like, really? Wow. And then, yeah, I don't know. I just got into it and haven't stopped. And it's just, um, I feel like it's really easy to work with other people with mm. Ableton. Yeah. You know, I like that a lot about it. And, I, and it's, I mean, that's like my whole Ableton racks thing, you know, is like I sell, I don't know if people know, but I sell Ableton racks plug right there, there uh, on my Note gum road. Shit, son. Yeah. Buy that shit. A H E E dot gum road.com. A he, a he. Um, and uh, I just put out my Magic Racks Volume 5. Go get it. Um, but um, I make these things because it's like they have all of these really amazing tools built into Ableton, and you can package them and share them in a really simple way. Yeah. Um, like, you can't really do that with, like, FL Studio or Bitwig, or maybe you could with Bitwig, but it just doesn't have the market share that Ableton has. Like, with Ableton, I can, like, make a rack that does something really dope that you just throw it on and it works. Mm -hmm. And then I can save it, package it up, send it to someone else. They can open it and it just works. Yeah. And I think that's something special about that. Yeah. I like the workflow. It's just so simple. I mean, I never had used anything else. I just started with Ableton because I just knew if you use Ableton, you get puss. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the real answer. I mean, that's why we do this, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was all the questions. I love cats had. too. Yeah. They did get puss. But, uh, <laughs> Cat puss. But uh yeah, that was all the questions we had, man. All right, cool. Yeah, this has well, been it's been super fun, man. It's been super fun. I'm super stoked to go on the tour, getting some shenanigans, wear a wig, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna wear a wig for maybe sure. Maybe a fish suit. Yeah, we'll see. I'll do it with you, brother. All right, all right, yeah, cool. dude. And when I'm with Toad Face, I'll wear a damn, you know, toad outfit. I don't give a fuck. There we go. Or I'll just wear a fish outfit in your honor. Okay. Yeah. Everyone be like, it's Ahi. Ahi, Ahi. And I'll be ahi. like, I'm finally in multiple places. I'm actually Ah She now. Okay. <laughs> it's fucked up for y'all to assume. <laughs> ah, them day. Yeah. <laughs> nah, man. I'm so fucking stoked to have you yeah, on the tour, same. man. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm a big fan of your music. Love oh, everything you do. Man. Love the production. I love how about the community you are. And it's just, man, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't have, you know, I couldn't ask for somebody better to be on the tour. I feel like I'm going to learn a lot uh, from I'm, you. I'm, I'm so honored. And yeah, we're going to, we're going to rock it. Hell yeah, dude. Anything you want the people to know before you get out of here? Um, go buy tickets to the tour. Mm -hmm. They're on pre-sale right now. Yeah, actually, when this comes out on Thursday, they'll be on pre-sale today. They're oh. on pre-sale today. And if you get on the pre-sale today, you can get, you win so many different things. You get to be a guest on the show, win uh, all the oh, merch. Wow. Yeah, sign posters, all that shit. Meet and greets. You could be in the seat right now. You could. Yeah. If you go buy a ticket. I'm going to like slowly disappear and then they'll appear. <laughs> like fade. It's just Kyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insider. Nah, man. But I, like I said, I really appreciate you being yeah, here today. Likewise, this, was, this was awesome. This was great. Yeah, Kyle. Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime, man. Anytime. Yeah, we'll do yeah. it again in a year and we'll, we'll just bullshit about whatever again. Oh, man. I, we'll have some stories. Yeah. I, actually, we're going to have some crazy stories. I'm actually going to do some pot road podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to talk about some crazy shit we've seen. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. We'll set it up at the hotel or green room. We'll do some. Well, road we got podcast. a lot of dates. We're gonna see a lot of shit. Yeah, we're gonna do a lot. I, so everyone, get as wild as possible. Appreciate you again, man, Kyle. Yeah. I appreciate you, and I appreciate everybody listening to this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. I will see y'all next week. Go buy some tickets to Blue Collar Base. Peace.